What's going on guys? It's Corbin here from highimpactwriting.com and uh, we're going to do something a little bit uh, different today. I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant. Um, one thing I've seen uh, cropping up in the uh, the internet marketing space recently has been like a, a return of this kind of ongoing debate between direct response marketing and uh, content marketing or direct response copywriting and um, content writing, um, however you kind of want to think about these things. Uh, Alex Hormozy did a, a recent video uh, that I found super interesting and worth watching. It was called um, Why Direct Response Marketers Get Rich, Not Wealthy. So I highly recommend uh, checking that out. Maybe I'll link to it below if I can remember, but I probably won't. Uh, <laughs> but worth checking out. But anyway, that's kind of what uh, spawned today's uh, video. Um, because this is kind of an ongoing debate of like, which one of these things is better. And the way it often kind of gets boiled down is that you know, these people doing content marketing are so dumb because, uh, you know, if you do any kind of marketing that isn't directly asking people for sale uh, somewhere in the mix of that, you know, content piece, whether it's an email or a video like this or a blog post, uh, you know, if you're doing any kind of marketing uh, and there's no no ask or no pitch, then you're you know, leaving money on the table, so to speak. And uh, so content marketing is stupid for that reason, uh, supposedly. And then on the other side of the spectrum, you get these people uh, looking at the direct response world, whether that's, um, you know, these gurus with uh, who rent a Lambo and like record uh, a course in one day and then try to sell it to people. Um, you know, a course about making a course, about making a course, about being a guru, that sort of thing. Uh, and then you also have these like direct response, uh, huge companies, uh, whether they're like Agora or, you know, any number of companies that have run into legal problems uh, for making uh, really strong claims. Let's just uh, leave it at that. Uh, and so, you know, that's kind of what it gets boiled down to is like these content marketing branding people are really dumb and, you know, they're leaving tons of money on the table. And then the other side of the spectrum, there's uh, these, you know, sleazy direct response douchebag people who, you know, take advantage of uh, boomers and, <laughs> and young uh, kids trying to make money online. Uh, and so that's often uh, what this debate gets reduced to. And so I want to try to provide some more nuance here. Um, and honestly, if you look at most successful businesses, and by that I mean biz businesses that are resilient and uh, successful over the long term, uh, most of them combine these two strategies to some degree. So, you know, I mentioned Agora, for example, and people would be like, oh, the, the, the Agora's pure direct response. Uh, and that's not true at all. Agora actually provides tons of free content. Uh, both in, you know, free email newsletters. Um, they're now making free uh, YouTube videos for a lot of their publications. Um, obviously, there's a pitch in a lot of those materials, um, but that's, again, just goes to show you that this line between content marketing and direct response is often blurred because it's like, you know, if I'm doing a content marketing pure content marketing piece, and let's say it's this video, um, you know, is the only thing that makes it content marketing the fact that I don't ask you to buy something? What if I do this same video and then I say, you know, click the links below and go to my website and my website is full of, you know, affiliate links that can make me money or I have a product that I, I briefly plug at the end or maybe I don't even mention it in this video and I just link it in the description. Is this now a direct response video or is it content marketing? Um, it just goes to show you that this, uh, like, it's a false dichotomy where these things, people have, feel like they're, like, battling it out and they can never overlap, and that just isn't the case at all. Um, but most, like, gurus, okay, uh, the reason this dichotomy exists is because people reside either in one space or the other. So you look at something like ClickFunnels and Russell Brunson, uh, very much direct response, you know, a lot of stuff about media buying, buying paid traffic, oh, you know, uh, conversion rates and funnels uh, and, you know, 
people would say, oh, you know, huge direct response company. And yet, uh, ClickFunnels recently, if you go on their website, they now have a WordPress blog. So is that, you know, direct response or is it content marketing? Uh, it's a mix of the two, really. So, uh, you know, but you don't ever hear this come up uh, for some reason. No one mentions that these two things should really be married um, and that, you know, to put it in its most simple form, you know, anything that you put out that is free is some form of content marketing. Uh, and anything with a CTA is ha incorporating some elements of direct response marketing. So, you know, 90% of, or let's say 80%, <laughs> the 80-20 rule, probably 80% of uh, marketing that is done probably falls somewhere um, in the world of incorporating, you know, ideas from both of those schools of thought. So um, I just wanted to put that out there because uh, it confused me for a long time, especially if you're a freelancer. It's like, am I a copywriter because I, I write stuff or is a copywriter only someone who writes, you know, Dan Kennedy style Agora sales letters that take two months to write and have a big idea and you know they're 60,000 words long and then all the conversion rates I you know or um you know if you do if if you write uh so for me for example I write a lot of uh blogs and email copy um does that make me a direct response marketer or a content marketer? I don't know. Um, <laughs> most, most people would say that email is direct response because you're asking, uh, you're presenting some kind of offer in a lot of emails, uh, at least the ones that I write. Um, but then, you know, most blogs also have a kind of soft pitch at the end too. So uh, it's really a, I don't know, drawing a line in the sand between these two things most of the time does more harm than good. Uh, but sometimes it's just like necessary to talk about them. Uh, so I understand why this distinction has come up, but uh, it's frustrating to me to see a lot of the, uh, I don't know, hate for each <laughs> that each side has for one another when in reality, um, you know, you look at, um, so for example, I'm in a, a Facebook group uh, with two very big, um, uh, I'll just say it's like a big uh, copywriting, you know, training company and whatever. Okay. And these people, um, uh, their whole, they're very much like direct response, teaching copywriters um, how to write sales letters. And, you know, that's great. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, but then you look at their own marketing efforts and it's like, yeah, there's like a, a long form sales page on their website and stuff. But most of the way that they promote um, their course is through uh, daily emails that do not make an ask. OK, it's through weekly YouTube, YouTube videos that are kind of like a case study and they do not make a hard ask. Um, they repurpose the emails into blog posts on their websites. Uh, they have a Facebook group that does not make an ask, uh, and it's largely user-generated content, other people posting things, uh, or they use it to promote, to repurpose uh, the other forms of content that I was just describing. And so, you know, 80% of their material that they're using to promote their direct response copywriting course is content marketing. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, Here's the other thing I've noticed and why I'm kind of more into uh, content marketing these days is I bet you those guys, uh, you know, they have a great sales page, sales letter for their course or whatever. Uh, but I bet you if they made it like the most dog shit copy of all time, if it was absolutely terrible, it would still convert pretty well because their strategy is largely content marketing and brand awareness focused where they're building... Um, they become people that you know, like, and trust because they give you free content uh, on a regular basis. That's basically what content marketing is, okay? And so, you know, I bet even though their sales letter is great, I bet if it was absolutely terrible or if there was even no, almost no copy at all and they just sent people to like uh, an order form after, you know, uh, making an ask in a, uh, whatever, like a YouTube video or an email, uh, it would still convert pretty well because people know, like, and trust them uh, from following them for so long. And if that's the case, uh, the copy 
oftentimes doesn't even matter, um, which is why that's kind of the point Alex Hermosi was making in that video is like, uh, you think about a brand like Nike or even a better example, something like uh, Tesla or Ferrari who do no advertising at all. And yet, you know, you have a very distinct image of what that brand is about and they could charge you whatever the hell they want and they don't use hardly any <laughs> any copy at all uh, oftentimes where it's like not very good um, and people will pay whatever for it, uh, especially Nike. I mean, they just have one slogan, just do it. Um, is that direct response marketing? Eh, I don't know. Uh, you're not like ask, you're not saying like buy this shirt now <laughs> or like making an offer like uh, buy three shirts, get, get the whole bundle 20% off. Uh, it's more so about people loving what the brand stands for. And then they go into a store and, you know, there's no direct response at all. They just see the Nike logo on a shirt and they'll pay three times as much for it as they would for anything else because the brand has such a strong quality over the years, um, largely built up through, you know, paid advertising. Nike does some of that, but, um, they don't make a direct ask in their commercials necessarily. So I don't know, just another example of how these lines are often blurred. And uh, yeah, the reason I do, uh, I'm, I guess, more interested in content marketing these days was because, you know, I was thinking back about the uh, the things I have bought online, whether it's coaching or eBooks, uh, info products, um, I guess like higher ticket items, basically. Um, and Basically, all the stuff I've bought from other people, whether it's coaching or, or mentorship, um, the copy has uh, never been the driving force. It's because I've been following that person oftentimes for years before I buy anything from them. And all they do is provide good, helpful content for years. And so then when they make me an offer and it's uh, even slightly aligned with like what I'm interested in or what my goals are, um, the copy could be like pretty mediocre and I would st <laughs> I'd still take them up on the offer because I know, like, and trust this person. And if their free stuff was so helpful, oh, their paid product has got to be, you know, way better. And that's my, my psychological state before I even read any, any copy or watch any kind of long form direct response VSL. Um, and so, you know, that's, uh, that's where I'm at <laughs> with the, the marketing space right now, guys. I just wanted to get that off my chest uh, because you see, like, I don't know, these uh, these direct response copy, like, gurus. And then you have, like, Seth Godin on the other end of the spectrum who's just, like, just come up with a, u a unique idea for your brand, a purple cow. And <laughs> it's all, he's, like, all branding on the other side of the spectrum. And so... Uh, I think there is a need for a more nuanced discussion, but you know that rarely uh, sells things because uh, being polarizing is more um, more attractive to people. Uh, but that's a subject for another video. I've already gone on like ten tangents in this one, so you can learn more at highimpactwriting.com. But if you want to see more videos, uh, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.